everyone. This is Dr. Sajaya Banerjee. I'm the CEO of Capstone People Consulting. We do work in the space of workplace culture, change management, leadership capability building, and have a new practice called Capstone DI, which actually consolidates our pioneering work for the last 13 years in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. I'm really excited to present to you all the season two of In The Lead. This is going to be about impact. This is going to be about leaders have redefined their worldview around leadership uh, that, you know, those who have the courage, like I said, to be able to think differently and impact the world and people uh, within organizations uh, differently. So I'm hoping that you will uh, get a lot of innovative ideas through these conversations. And I'm hoping you're going to take away many nuggets that will inspire you to lead your life differently. With that, very excited to present to you In The Lead uh, Season 2. And I'm excited to be able to bring to you Sunil Dutt, the president of Reliance Geo Infocom, uh, who continues leading an organization that is disrupting uh, this industry, which is indeed um, disrupting and manifesting leadership in, in so many different innovative ways. Uh, this group is doing things differently, and we want to learn from them. Sunil Dutt is a veteran in the telecom industry with over 30 years of experience in the technology industry. Before joining Reliance Geo Infocom, he was working as an independent uh, consultant and as a business leader and facilitator for Asia Markets. He was also managing director for the Canadian smartphone maker BlackBerry India and has been president and computer maker Hewlett Packard in his earlier jobs. Sunil was the country head for the mobile business of Samsung, where till date he is credited for building the Korean firm's smartphone business and making it the largest player in India today. Sunil steered Nokia India and built Nokia's mobile phones business to a dominant position in the Indian market between 2002 and 2007 and has also worked with leading brands like Whirlpool, Barista, Wipro and Philips in his earlier avatars. We are delighted to present Sunil Dutt, President at Reliance Geo Infocom Limited, in the very first episode of In the Lead Season 2. Hi, Sunil. Thank you Hi. once again for being able to indulge us and in coming to Season 2. So thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, Sujaya. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be, to be here, to be talking to you. Yes. So, uh, Sunil, I'm going to start at the start. You play disruptors in the telecom industry. I know that the world over people want to learn more about all that you've done. But I think other than disrupting the um, the manner in which you've done business, um, you know, you have most certainly played a very inclusive role in terms of uh, being able to, um, you know, uh, offer connectivity to people uh, who would otherwise have been marginalized. So I'm very interested to be able to know and understand what are the top two, three challenges uh, you know, uh, your kind of organization is continuing to experience in the post-COVID world. You know, in terms of in terms of reaching out to these, uh, I wouldn't call marginalized, uh, you know, communities, but I would say, you know, to the remotest parts of this country. Yeah. And uh, uh, in that sense, you know, we had planned, we had planned early on. You know, uh, even in September 2016, when we launched, at that time also our chairman's focus was always on Bharat. Hmm. When we were installing our network, hmm. unlike a lot of other uh, telcos, so to say, hmm. Hmm. Uh, we did not go, uh, you know, a circle by circle approach or, you know, hmm. we do one region first. We installed our network infrastructure across the country to be able to cover almost 100% of India's population at that time. Right. And at some places, there were people who maybe were not able to still full use the full benefits of uh, our network. And those are probably because, uh, you know, there were maybe initial thoughts about affordability, then there were uh, issues of the availability of handsets, and yeah. issue of availability of mobile devices at an affordable yeah. price point. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, possibly were, you know, factors which uh, they couldn't overcome at mm -hmm. the early stage because smartphone owners quickly moved from 3G into the 4G technology and uh, Volti because they clearly saw huge benefits 
hmm. of doing that and uh, they were experiencing things which they had never ever experienced in terms of uh, not just connectivity but also in hmm. terms of a whole lot of information that they could oh, yeah. get access to oh, yeah. and the oh, way yeah. they could express themselves as a hmm. result of that connectivity yeah but as i said the focus for us and for our chairman who kept relentlessly pursuing this was to be able to make broadband mobile broadband internet accessible mm. to people in the rural heartland in yeah. the bharat in the real bharat of this of this country yeah and as a result we brought in what we call what we called earlier a geophone and now a geo bharat which is mm. typically a, a keypad button type of phone small screen yeah. yeah but which operates on 4g technology yeah and it gives access of mobile internet to all the customers in fact the latest one which we brought enables people to watch television watch cinema watch ipl cricket matches yeah. watch news yeah and also they are able to do digital payments Hmm. receive and make digital payments with yeah. that handset that handset is priced at something like 999 rupees hmm. and as compared with the others a mobile internet plan of just 123 rupees a month hmm. so hmm. really i mean what we what, what we did earlier and now what we are doing yeah so far we already you know benefited about 150 million people in the rural heartland and yeah. more and more people are also joining us uh, yeah yeah along with that <clears throat> what we also did was even in a period like you know at the time of covid yeah we had ensured that none of, none of the customers especially yeah. in in the rural part of the country and in that you know in in what we call bharat they were not facing any kind of discontinuity of service yeah for this we did it twofold one we ensured that whether they were able to recharge or not hmm. we still had them connected to the hmm. world and to hmm. their loved ones and to their near and dear ones and to information yeah. yeah and second what we did was that even though the entire world seemed to have shut down hmm. you know uh, we enabled we enabled a million plus entrepreneurs you know geo hmm. associates as we call them hmm. and these people were able to service their hmm. villages their communities their catchment yeah. areas their condominiums hmm. and uh, that ensured that the customers were always uh, all the customers were always having a recharge available to them you know yeah. almost next to each other and you yeah. know for with people that they trusted so they could digitally recharge all of them oh, yeah. we even trained a million plus of our retailers to be able to hmm. do the same thing in hmm. their catchment areas Yeah, and we enabled those retailers to receive the recharge from us digitally also. Right. So we we did all of that, you know, and ensured that everybody, not one single customer, would drop from our network, whether mm. they were able to pay for it or they were not able to pay for it. We ensured that during the COVID period, they were all there, and yeah. you know, we we kept them connected. Right. And uh, you know, since then also we've been kind of accelerating. across uh, the country not just with 4g but now even with 5g as a technology and we are taking 5g even into the rural part of the country so and, mm. and the kind of response that we are getting is 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 really amazing yeah uh, to your question of uh, you know what challenges did you experience post challenges <laughs> honestly uh, you know we i i don't think we been seeing any challenges mm. uh, what we have been seeing is a lot of opportunities yes, by you know facilitating these consumers to make the right decisions for themselves yeah enabling them to get connected with the world with the yeah. environment around themselves with the latest technology with innovations so we yeah. see ourselves uh, you know continuing to make a significant impact yes on several domains and these could be healthcare agriculture yeah. education environment yeah. supply chain financial oh, yeah. management and i'm oh, you yeah. can just go on and on everything oh, yeah. and we are making oh, yeah. an impact on each and every one that's why it's such a fascinating game changer story at multiple levels and and 
there are opportunities in the post covid world and you're calling that out uh, you know so easily and so seamlessly in the context of the question on challenges and uh, the way in which you have continuously experimented and i'm trying to create like a, a snapshot of the fact that you've been in the market for a little over over a decade and there's just been continuous experimentation and i want to try and get inside your heads a little in terms of how that experimentation works uh, is there a consequence for no action in most organizations even if they're talking about experimentation uh, you know there isn't an appetite for failure what is the environment around trying something and then failing and then trying it again and then trying better and then hitting momentum and now you seem to have really hit that momentum in a very significant way where you don't even see any challenges because you're only seeing opportunities around you so describe that process a bit for us because it's very apparent from the outset yeah so uh, you know couple of things uh, i would like to you know say hmm. you know one we recognized early enough that and what we saw hmm. you know and what we saw unfold in, in in front of ourselves is that during and post covid businesses uh, have been transforming at a very rapid pace hmm. uh, anything that we are trying to anything nothing is constant anything that we try to see as you know making a sense over a period of time is suddenly changing as we keep moving along mm. so during and post covid i would say you know one reliance on technology has in, has increased a lot mm. remote fulfillment deeper understanding of consumer preferences mm. including the needs and wants being able to trigger the same you know mm. uh, due to the information and because of all the ai tools that that people have in hand now yeah. so lots and lots of changes are happening every day and these changes are expected to accelerate even yeah. more in future mm. so what we see is that at every point of time there are new skills which are needed mm. people at all points of time are are required to be you know upskilling themselves mm. and it's not about employment it's about employability for people also yeah but at the same time you know what we do is uh, you know what we discussed at one point of time soja which is learn fast fail fast and mm. and you know execute fast i would add to that yeah you know, we 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 set extremely stretch goals for ourselves mm. which are seldom achievable mm. i'm being honest here it's not mm. achievable yeah but one would imagine that you know people would get discouraged by yeah. not achieving them But yeah that's not the case hmm. because what we do is we enable people to set some very stretch goals and then work backward from those goals yeah set targets and timelines to be able to reach there and set the teams that are required to reach there right we tend to miss them at times hmm. but we keep supporting and we keep encouraging the efforts which the people are making towards achieving those goals hmm. and so long as we know that there is a work which has gone into it with complete sincerity there's a lot of innovation which has gone behind it there is a, a winning mindset which has gone behind this infinite game we emerge winners hmm. so we we even disrupt our own thinking in that sense yes, yes. we are not limiting ourselves so we we kind of define what is needed to be done we redefine what is needed to be done we make changes halfway and mm. one of the reasons for that is because there is so much of engagement at all points of time mm. you know you succeed you come mm. back you fail you come mm. back you share the learning at mm. all points of time yes. you know we just we, we we talk about uh, you know failure is a is a necessary step to success and the rest of that but most organizations don't have the appetite for this so i want you to talk a little more about uh, you know how you'll you'll have created this rhythm for learn fast fail fast by being able to create a window that is much smaller for goal setting and the way in which you review this and bring people back after having got them to commit to stretch goals there is no consequence if you didn't achieve the stretch goal but there is a consequence if you didn't learn from not achieving a stretch goal so yeah what we do is any any goal that we set for ourselves hmm. you know as i said we first break it down into smaller tasks and targets hmm. with timelines and with the teams hmm. it's just not that what we also do is we put a measurable dashboard to it 
So we've got everything that we do. We've got a platform support going going behind it. Hmm. So which means that one, there is a consistency across the country of what we are wanting to do. Hmm. Second is the platform, the technology enables us to see everything that is happening real time. Yeah. So, for example, if at this point of time, if in a small village of this country, a customer mm. has has taken up a geo mobile connection, mm. it will be visible to me at the same instance over here at the national headquarters of geo mm. and same information will be available to each and every person who is responsible for that market. Mm. So mm. it's a real time information that we have. That is one part. The second right. is that we have dashboards for measuring everything. And now those right. dashboards are available to us on our mobile devices. Mm. So we can look at those dashboards at any point of time. We can go into our tools, at the platform tools at, at any given point of time and see right. what is happening in which market. And if any market needs any kind of help, Hmm. then we are able to provide it because they are able to raise their hand and say, I need this help. We are able to solve that hmm. issue for them at that point of time. Yeah. That knowledge goes into a knowledge bank, which is hmm. available to the entire country. Wow. So just to give you an idea, we have a thousand geo centers and hmm. six and a half thousand geo points. The geo points hmm. are really right down to the Taluka level or even hmm. below them hmm. and geo centers above them. And mm. each and every one of those has salespeople, they've got customer service people, they've got supply chain people, network people, everybody close to the ground to be able to handle any kind of customer query, opportunity, yeah. problem in real time. Right. So what we do is, while all this is happening, the dashboards are available to us on a real time. We don't really wait for a formal review of a situation. Right. If we see something going very good, we quickly hmm. adapt, you know, we quickly learn as to what is happening in that market and try and share it across the country. Hmm. And if something is going wrong, we then step in and ask, you know, what is it that is required to be done to correct the situation? Right. What is required? Where is the right. problem? You know, and, and correct that instantly. So I think that way, when we say, you know, learn fast, fail fast, learn fast, it's a process that has that is set in. Yeah. And honestly, failure is not looked at as a failure. It is looked upon as a learning opportunity of, you know, yeah. we try to do something, yeah. this did not work. Hmm. It does not mean that we have failed. Yeah. It did not yeah. work. Something else is required to make it work yeah. or yeah. something else will be will be working. So right. what is that something else? What is yeah. that next step? Is something yeah. that we quickly focus on. Failure right. happened, done with, water under the bridge, forget about it, move yeah. to the next step. Yeah, and I think this is wonderful. Don't... What you're describing so normally, uh, Sunil, is very sorely absent in most cultures. And uh, I think that, you know, you're, you're, you're truly entrepreneurial at the core, you know, as an organization, which is the reason why there is the spirit to say that we tried doing this. If not, let's try something else. If not, let's try something else. And I think this is right at the center of what organizations really need, especially in the post-COVID world. Uh, so, you know, I want you to continue because this is very uh, fascinating. And I'm going to add a question to this, which is uh, how you deal with uh, communication, because especially when you're working like that, uh, communication needs to be right at the core of it. All that you're describing is about how you're aligning with people and changing conditions in the market to be able to constantly change, innovate, find new solutions, find creative way to be able to solve the problem. And I think the manifestation of this is very widely available to be able to be seen. I'm interested to know how you're communicating this inside the organization, Sunil. Is there any, any uh, hack there for those who are listening to this conversation? I believe for all leaders, one of the biggest skills which they need to have is to be able to communicate with the teams. Mm. And when I say teams, it is across the board. People mm. who they are working with, people they are working for, their peers. So communication is something which is essential for a leader. Yeah. Both in terms of clarity of the communication, 
the honesty of communication the the communication to be able to ensure that people are able to understand what is required to be done right and why it is required to be done what is the role which people are playing what is the bigger picture of which they are a part of and why their part is so essential right so we need to be able to communicate that right down to the last person hmm. sometimes sometimes you know if it's a different level of communication the chinese whispers do happen i mean there is hmm. certain there yeah. is certain transmission loss which happens in communication but we very quickly you know our, our systems our dashboards our measures they quickly tell us you know whether the information has actually reached the last level or not reached the last level has right. everybody understood it or not understood it and therefore what are the changes that are required to be done so right. in that sense you know i will not go with the cliche term of you know the the over communication is better yeah. than under communication etc etc i think that is known to everybody i think what is more important is clarity of communication and to be able to communicate truthfully and honestly hmm. why are we doing something right i think that is very very powerful i'm going to come to talking to you about talent you know especially because like i said this is a democratizing leadership platform and so we're going to have viewers from across levels uh, i want to know especially in this orientation towards communication transparency aligning people engaging people to contribute you know what you see very apparently in the market is that there is a huge challenge in terms of being able to attract the new generation um gen z to be able to come in they are a little different from past generations they don't necessarily uh you know sort of benchmark vertically with past generations they do have they are a product of these times they're a product of technology they've lived in the digital era forever they don't know a life which is without uh the kind of access to uh technology uh so they are a very uh in in a way different generations have come in an environment where there is a choice thank god um and they're also trying to discover their strengths tell me a bit about what have been your experiences with young talent and i'm going to add on to that especially um because there is the second phenomenon unfolding is oftentimes a challenge around mid management so uh you know a lot of leadership teams believe that they have uh you know they they're trying their heart, their best to be able to align teams they're trying to get teams to get excited about what it is that they're doing uh, but they really believe there's a delta there in terms of being able to develop mid level talent um you know which kind of cries out loud for coaching actually but as a culture because how did we end up having mid level talent which is uh not up to speed uh this is typically the group that's the millennials who are at mid levels within organizations and then there you have the gen z at the entry level your experiences with both groups and how you're keeping them aligned and engaged at uh, geo okay so a uh, very interesting question that one uh, suja and uh, you know i think when it comes to people uh, i think that that's where that's where the core of any success lies yeah in people uh because people who who will make uh, make change success break everything you know so yeah. it's it's people everything is to do with people so uh you know again you know our, our our chairman again and i refer to him again again because you know he is so passionate about young talent hmm. and uh, to bring in young talent he is very passionate about young people because they come with they come with no baggage they come hmm. with confidence which is required to take organizations forward they come with ability to be able to state their minds openly they come with uh, ability to think and act much faster because they have access to technology they are not riding those tigers they have they are comfortable with it they are aware of the world much more so the young talent is something that we are constantly trying to attract and retain and train and ensure that their innovative power really helps the organization yeah. and they are the ones who are you know really running our our engines yeah. in terms of the the middle level uh, you know people i think uh, they also form the strong backbone yeah. uh, strong and flexible backbone for an organization yeah. because uh, these are the people who who are motivated to use their thinking power bring in mm. new ideas along with their young teams because mm. uh, you know 
they not only belong to the present world, but they're also dealing with the next set of generation, which they are, they are more closely connected with. And yes. they are able to contribute towards not only thinking, but also towards execution. Hmm. So uh, it's, it's uh, in that sense, you know, uh, we have several young people, you know, hmm. in the leadership hmm. positions because the potential which they've been showing in hmm. terms of thinking, in terms of acting, in terms of acting ahead, in terms of coaching young hmm. talent and in terms of giving confidence and direction to to the teams. So, you know, age really doesn't define, you know, who's hmm. going to be uh, who's going to be at what position in this organization. It right. is uh, the person's capability that defines who's going to be at what position. In spite of the fact that, you know, we've been now almost seven and a half, eight years in, in the market, we are still a startup. Hmm. The way hmm. we think, the way we are executing, we are still a startup. Yeah. And because of that, you know, our young people, our young talent, our mid-level people, they are able to think and execute much faster. Hmm. And they are able to come back and the leaderships, uh, the leadership is able to support them by hmm. constantly getting engaged with them. Personally, I would say our experience with the with the younger generation has been extremely good. Uh, what do you look for when you when you call someone high potential? So when you said that I we give early opportunities to people, you know, could can you describe uh, specific behavioral traits that you're looking for, or certain things that you see in their persona, which is getting you to feel confident that they can handle uh, a bigger job? So g give me a sense on that. There, there are there are two kinds of and I'm talking from a geo perspective. You know, there are two kinds of hmm. leaders that that you're looking for. One who are clearly uh, very strong in their thinking ability, because those hmm. are the people that you require for uh, constantly being able to innovate and think about what is to be done next. Hmm. Hmm. Or if there is a particular way of doing things, how do I? How do I innovate in that to be able to do that better? Hmm. And then you require leaders who are great at executing. Yeah. It is wonderful if you can get the same talent in both. Yeah. Sometimes you don't. But then even if you don't, people that we are looking for, even if they are good with execution, they also need to be having a great mind in hmm. terms of strategizing that execution. Yeah. So people with thinking ability of be able to look around them in terms of what all are the influencers on our business yeah. and within those influencers of the business how is it that they need to work towards ensuring that the next step that we are planning to take has been thought through maybe the next three four steps so that the next step that we are taking is in the right direction yeah how, is this, how do we strategize the execution yeah. so it is not just being good at only thinking or strategizing but also executing and being mm. good at executing that matters you know mm. for people uh, to be getting into leadership positions yeah uh, there will be different opportunities for you know different people as i said you know people who are capable of thinking and strategizing they need to be in certain positions people who are great at executing they need to be in different positions mm. and they need to be able to individually collectively find if they have the mindset to be able to look for opportunities, look for solutions, mm. Mm. look for how to communicate them. Yeah. They are comfortable working with teams. They're comfortable with technology to be able to make technology work for them. Yeah. They're comfortable in being able to adapt to different circumstances. They're able mm. to adopt the, the influence of, uh, you know, future technology roadmaps, their mm. ability to understand what is happening in the regulatory environment, mm. financial mm. environment, technology mm. environment, even fashion yeah. environment, yeah. innovation trends, etc. Et so some of these, if we recognize that there are people with this kind of talent yeah. for different yeah. positions, we have these you know different requirements, then those are the people who are offered, you know, that that uh, responsibility to be able to, you know, yeah. take it forward execute yeah. it yeah if they're able to take it up run with it very good if not we always are constantly looking at what support we need to give to these people mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they are comfortable in terms of executing it yeah yeah any coaching any mentoring which is required to be done you know we do it 
we do it very informally. There's nothing like, you know, we make the person sit down and say, okay, you're not doing this correct. And we just say, okay, what is it that you require? Where is it that you require it? Are you able to look at it this way? You know, this yeah. takes me to something that you just spoke about right now, which is around uh, harnessing market opportunities, which is, uh, you know, a, a function of nimbleness and agility, basically. Now, I know that practically every organization is talking about it. It's a buzzword, just like innovation is. And uh, all are looking to see how they can change the rhythm of execution in the organization to become more agile. Um, now, there's lots of lots of threads there. But you are clearly, uh, you know, harnessing the outcomes of being agile as an organization. So uh, what are your insights or, if at all, hacks that you might want to give organizations yeah, so that I are struggling any, to become agile? Yeah. yeah, so I think for any organization, so yeah, to be able to be agile and to be able to take quick actions, I think what, what's critical is information. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. You know, so one is information which is coming back from the market, hmm. information related to customers, to consumers, to people. The second is information which is internal hmm. in terms of what is it that the organization is working on? What is it that the organization is, uh, is, is, uh, is setting itself as a goal for the next, hmm. you know, five years? Hmm. and next five months and next five weeks. Hmm. I think that information is very critical for everybody to be able to perform. Hmm. And that is something which which all successful leaders are good at in terms of sharing. Hmm. And the more you're able to share, the more you're able to collaborate and the more you're able to say, okay, this is what we need to achieve. Yeah. This is what we need to achieve together the faster is the decision making in terms of what is to be done. Yeah. Because yeah. then you're able and then you need to have that open culture to be able to encourage people to speak their minds. Yeah. They have to be able to speak up their mind. They have to be able to fearlessly state that, okay, you know, this is what is required to be done. This is Good what point. is happening in the market. So like we say, you know, again, maybe it's an old saying, but in our organization, we practice it. Uh, there's good news and a bad news. Share the bad news first. Good <laughs> okay. news can always wait. Hmm. You know, share the bad hmm. news first so that we are able to take corrective actions. Hmm. Because anything which is a bad news is going to impact a customer experience. Yeah. So that needs to be attended to much faster. Yeah. You know, good news is great. We can always hmm. build upon it and we always yeah. work towards ensuring that, you know, that helps uh, in the next steps as well. So yeah. I think that is something which is critical for any organization to be able to uh be flexible in the market you yeah. know, it's the leadership that needs to be flexible it's yeah the thinking that needs to be flexible yeah. we need to be able to as i said you know earlier on also if something is failing don't spend too much of time on it hmm. Hmm. it's failing it requires some different kind of treatment yes you know if if there is a situation that we need to retrieve then we need to find yeah. out five different solutions to it something yeah. will work yeah. But if we feel that, okay, you know, we've tried our best, everything is done, it's still not working. Yeah. Then then let's not waste our resources behind it. Let's figure mm. out what is the next thing to be done so that, mm. again, as the chairman says, mm. we don't rest till there is even one dissatisfied customer, mm. you know, working for, yeah. for us. Yeah. We can't yeah. rest. Yeah. Because we need yeah. to ensure that there are people who are, who are, happy they are moving the right direction yeah will we have will we have it for all more than 450 million customers of us yeah always a challenge so to say you know yeah. the first time yeah. i'll say that yeah but uh, but again that is an opportunity for us to ensure that you know okay so if this is not if this is not good enough for the customer then what yeah. is it that we need to change how do right. we change that okay and, you know information is is yeah. very critical for yeah. Uh, yeah. for us to make decisions and move forward yeah. so the yeah. more transparent we are the more systems that we have which give us enough and more information of what is happening as i said you know in the entire environment 
not just in the I, market. I loved how you've kind of, you know, expanded the definition of agility in so many ways. And I think I'm just recapping it for those who are listening to this. You talked about agility in the context of having information, access to information being very crucial if you want to be agile. Um, that, you know, you've got to have people who can bring the outside in. If you're an inward looking organization, it's very difficult to be able to respond to the environment as quickly as you really can. And so the knowledge of different streams to be able to be able to respond uh, in a more agile manner. I liked what you spoke about uh, the culture of speak up which is encouraging people to be able to come in and talk about things, and especially to talk about discordant information, like you said, the bad news before the good news, so that we can address it. To simply understand and create a sensitization of the impact of not solving problems. And I think I heard you say that in different ways, in terms of can't afford to have a customer experience being disrupted or can't afford to have a brand experience being disrupted. So you come in very quickly if there is something that is discordant. Yes. Um, and that, you know, there got to be people who know how to harness opportunities and solve problems on their feet. I'm, I'm interested to move this forward in terms of asking you an important question. We are recording this in the month of June. This is when a lot of young people come into organizations and start their careers. You want to tell someone who's starting their career in 2024. So do you have like a message for young professionals uh, who are still in college yeah. or planning to apply shortly or those who are already joining the workplace? In 2020 what i would like to tell them you know i mean i you know steve jobs uh, famous speech those words yes. echo in my mind all, all the time you know which is stay foolish stay hungry mm. that that keeps echoing in my head mm. and you know i think all young people who are starting off whether you're starting off in jobs or whether you're starting off in your in your businesses i think uh, it's important to to learn from that. It's important to remain like that, you know. Mm. Uh, and and for that to happen, you know, you need to get comfortable to make technology work for you. And I'm not saying all of you need to be engineers. It's not possible. But even if you are not, you need to be able to at least understand how technology can help you. Mm. Uh, you need to build your skills for, as I said earlier, employability. Hmm. You know, not just for your jobs, but for businesses. Because even in businesses, what you're doing is you're you're employing yourself on it. So I think that is something which is something that you need to build as a skill. Learning itself is a skill which which needs hmm. to be worked upon and which yeah. needs to be developed at all stages in life. Hmm. You know, in personal space and in workspace, both. Now the other thing is, as I said earlier, there's a lot of opportunity in this world. Hmm. There's a lot of opportunity because the world has become more connected. Yeah. It has become a smaller place. Yeah. I think the opportunity is to be able to learn from this world grid yeah. and keep getting the required skill sets, which hmm. are required for either your job or your business. Hmm. And then while you're doing all of that, you know, it will be unfair if I don't say that, you know, learn to also have a life beyond work. Hmm. And beyond business, of course, so learn to spend time with your loved ones because that will hmm. help you in terms of refreshing your thought processes. Yeah, you know, the other is you know keep yourself fit. Hmm. You don't need to develop six packs or something, but keep hmm. yourself fit physically, hmm. mentally. Yeah, and when you're convincing yourself that you can't do it, that that is the time to take the first step when you discover that you can actually do it. Hmm. One one more word which I would definitely like to put in here is yeah. Yeah. you will get kicked in your teeth hmm. as you get along. Hmm. There will be time when you get kicked in your teeth. Hmm. At that time, the choice really lies with you in terms of whether you choose creativity and resolve to overcome that kick in the teeth yeah. hmm. and win it or become a cynic. Hmm. I think the former is always better. Yeah. So long yeah. as you're doing that, you're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. I think this one is required from a resilience perspective for the um, younger group that's coming into, into the workplace. I think the one on work-life balance and fitness, I think we could learn a thing or two from them uh, when it comes to that. I think they're big advocates of both those areas. But thank you. This was fantastic. I'm going to only let you go after you answer one more question for me, which is, 
uh, you know, this is catering to, uh, you know, those who are working for MSMEs or leading MSMEs or leading startups. I mean, all that you've been able to achieve as a manifestation of entrepreneurship. What would you like to leave as a message behind for those who are uh, leading MSMEs and those who are leading startups? Uh, I recall my conversation with the Apex team uh, chairman at the time when I joined. Hmm. And... And this is for people who are not just, you know, going to be running their own MSMEs, but also people who are going to be working in the corporate life. Hmm. Uh, you know, what he had said was, while welcoming, you know, treat this as your own company. Hmm. Work like building your own organization. Hmm. Don't ever make a presentation for me. Make it for yourself. Hmm. And he says that every day. Hmm. You know, do what is right for the company and do right what what is right for your customers and hmm. for your country hmm. if you are then convinced that what you put down on the piece of paper is the right thing the right path if you are convinced then you will be able to explain it to the entire world in two pages hmm. <laughs> Yes, I think this is all so well said. I must say that, uh, you know, very, very rich perspectives and very open sharing, uh, Sunil. Very, very grateful for that. I think everything you said here was so reeking of wisdom. So thank you for um, manifesting everything that uh, we want to present in, in the lead and is coming through on real, actual, grit, determination, hard work, uh, focus, alignment, uh, teamwork. Uh, ingenuity, innovation, all of it, which your stories have really been all about. Thank you so much, Sunil. And thank you, everyone who's listened in on this conversation. And do add your questions at the bottom of this if you'd like to. And do subscribe to In The Lead. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Sunil, one, once again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.